what's hope at Crafty Hope, and welcome to this newest assemblage video. I am working with this little house shape thing that I bought at the Dollar Tree. In fact, I've bought a ton of them. They come in several different shapes and sizes, and I love them. So, as you saw, I don't like that inside um, color of it, so I taped it off with some washi tape, and I'm painting it with black gesso. That's all going to change. It doesn't really matter that I paint it with black gesso. In fact, I think I put two or three coats in there, but that's going to all end up changing. So I have this wooden spool that I decided I wanted to paint green. This is some Martha Stewart paint. The bottle broke, so I just put it in this other bottle from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and so I'm going to paint it this pretty green color. I think this is an olive green, um, which has been one of my jams lately. It's an olive green shade. So, as you can see, I just painted the spool. It's going to be the focal element or part of the focal element in this later. So, once it's good and dry, I'm going to move back to my house here again. I'm going to show you I'm painting some more. I don't even know why I kept this in here. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just showing you I put another coat of gesso in there. And then the edges of the box, I was not super keen on the light color that's on there. So I've got this uh, antiquing wax. This is the folk art one, but I think you can get, um, I think there are other brands of it. And it's just an antiquing wax. And basically you paint it on and rub it off. And it's kind of like a stain. I don't know if that's actually the absolute way you're supposed to use it, but that's the way I've been using it. So, as you saw, I painted it on, and I'm going to wipe it off. I also do the wood on the front and, and the inside of that little house shape, too. All right, so I've got some 6 by 6 scrapbook paper there that I've decided I'm going to put on the inside of my little house. So I'm taking a piece of copy paper to kind of make a template. So I've put it in there, and I'm just, yeah, bending it into the shape kind of of the inside of that little house shape like that and so I'm going to use those creases to cut that shape and then once I get the shape cut out I'm going to fit it into my little house and I'm just showing y'all that how I, I go about getting the shape for in in here so I put it in there and um it's not yeah so I'm going to crease it in there and then pull it back out and yeah, I'm going to try to, <laughs> and then cut down where the creases are. Just trying to get the scrapbook paper to eventually fit in there pretty, pretty concisely, pretty tightly, so that there's not a whole lot of um, folding or bending or other things showing. So yeah, and then I'm going to take, yep, there was my scrapbook paper, and I'm going to grab a pen. First, I'm trying to decide which part of the scrapbook paper that I'd like most to put in my little house. And so I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to trace my, my house shape with my pen and then cut that out. So I think some of this I'm going to not share with you. Um, I'm really enjoying this assemblage art project. Every one of the ones I've done is a little bit different, and I, so that's why I'm kind of including some of these kind of odd parts in here, things that are self-explanatory for some people that maybe don't know how I did something or want a little more explanation. So let me know if there are parts that you think I included too much of or needed to include more of or whatever. Because I, you know, I don't know who's watching this. And I don't know what information it is you want to see. And there's going to be some information in here in a little bit for the focal of this. I'm not going to include because I learned the technique from someone else. So um, we'll get to that in a minute. All right. So that the edges don't seem so stark once I get that in there, I'm going to take some walnut stain distress ink and a blending tool and just put that around the edges. This color kind of matches the stain that we put on the wood so it blends a little more uh, seamlessly from the paper into the, the wood portion of this. And like I said, I showed y'all that I painted the back of that shape with the black gesso and I you know 
it was unnecessary, but I didn't want any of that bright color peeking through. I wasn't sure exactly what paper I was going to use. All of that just needed to be pushed back. I decided to go ahead and age up that spool a little with some of that walnut stain and that blending tool. I'm not sure if that stuck real well or not, that ink, but it was worth a try just to give it a little bit of age as well. Now, I'm not going to leave that spool uh, all green. I'm going to add some paper to the center of it. So I've got this. It's an old time book. It's how um, uh, people track time was they wrote it in these little books and then submitted that. And, and yeah, I think that's how that worked. Anyway, so I measured that out. I'm going to just wrap that paper around my spool. First, I've cutting it down just a little bit more so it's not bend increasing and in just a second I think I'm going to even cut that down no yeah um I'm going to pull out my matte gel medium and a paintbrush oh no I decide to to darken the edges of this too again I mean this is already kind of aged and antique and and I don't know if y'all can hear the dog y'all um sorry about that <laughs> But this is already aged and antique, but I wanted to add just a little more to continue that that walnut stain color kind of through everything. And then I've got my matte gel medium that I'm going to use to stick down that little piece of the uh, time book. I don't know what else to call that. They're like, I don't know. I picked up a bunch of them. I got a big haul of ephemera from one family and a lot of it's, I don't know, from the ages. These time books, a lot of them are from the 20s and 30s. And so they're almost antiques. And I think they're super neat. I like all the writing and stuff in them. And there were tons of them because that family had a construction company, apparently. And so there's all kinds of stuff. I didn't get a whole lot of blueprints in there. But there's also, like, letters to the company. And then there's, like, personal things like recipes that the lady from the family made and stuff like that. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. It was a big score. All right. I used that matte gel medium while I had it out and just put that straight into my house shape. And I am, I stuck in my scrapbook paper there. Just like that. Easy peasy. All right. So these little mushrooms I learned from a YouTube tutorial from um, another person. And I really like to process. I'm going to link her video either here up in the right corner, but definitely down below. I'll have it. Um, she does it pretty quickly. So you could either slow her video down or... Um, pause it as you watch it to figure out how to make them. But I don't want to show that technique since it was hers. Um, and so I just made these three mushrooms and it's some fabric, some wire, some lace. And yeah, so, and I'm trying to, I'm stuffing them in the top of that spool. And I decided one of them was too long and cut it down using my pliers and then that made some of that lace come untwisted. So just use my tacky glue to stick it back down. And I'm going to use the tacky glue here in just a second to go ahead and get at least two of those mushrooms in there. And th there's a lot of fiddling here, y'all, getting those mushrooms just where I want them. So I'm finally going to just go ahead and stick them in there. And I was trying to keep that tacky glue from the top, even though it dries clear. I didn't want any kind of lumpy, bumpy shininess, so I'm trying to keep it off of there. So I get those first two in there, and I realize that the third one's not really going to go down into that little spool hole as well. Excuse me. As the first two do, so I'll pull out my trusty E6000 to get it stuck where I wanted. Now, since that the armature of the stems of these mushrooms is wire. I can bend these however I want them once I get it in there. Yeah, you're sorry. I'm going to pull out that E6000 just to make sure this last one really sticks well because it's not going to get as much stability down in the hole as those other two do. All right. And for some reason, I thought I was going to put that off to that like right edge of the of the box, but 
it's going to end up in the center because it is my focal. So that I left my little mushrooms to dry and went and found something that I wanted for a uh, like a sentiment on there because the upper portion of that mushroom box looked too empty. So I found this chip quote from Tim Holtz and I'm using the old, I think it's old paper, old paper uh, distress ink that I am coloring it because the white of it was just too, too stark. So, but then it still feels kind of not rustic enough. And I had so much rust dyed fabric and lace on my mushrooms, I decided to use my Rusty Hinge Distress Oxide, and I just put it there on my craft sheet with some water, and I'm going to splatter it onto that dwell and possibility. And now I love that that says dwell on it because houses are dwellings, and so I consider this a mushroom dwelling. Um, so it's all these little plays on words. Um, so I've got all those kind of where I want, and I'm going to grab my E6000 to stick everything down, putting, I'm going to, go, yeah, I'm going to start with that phrase because it would be too fiddly to put the mushrooms down and then try to get that in there. And then I will just put the E6000 on the bottom of my spool with my mushrooms and stick that in there. And all that's it for this one. I know this is kind of, not really a long video, but kind of long for really what this was. But like I said, I don't know exactly what everybody wants to see from this. And so I'm including what I can, cutting out some of the repetitive stuff. If you do have any questions, do not hesitate to ask below. I'd love to know what you think of this cute little thing. Look how cute it is. I love it so much. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for coming by y'all. Bye.